Your hammer shall pass. Your fury shall pass. Eat the one. Eat the one. Honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, a Sasia Shalawam to the elect uh, scattered abroad. Okay, I want to touch on this short video. Um, well, what can we say? We are going, uh, coming against the Christian doctrine. In the Christian church, through the spirit of the Lord, we are casting down those vain imaginations that they have set up. These uh, fake preachers, these fake, uh, this fake deity of Jesus Christ, which the real, the real savior was a so-called black man. Okay. And all the idols that our people worship. Okay. Now. I saw on the comment board of this uh, video, uh, someone said, do we, uh, King David, dance for the Lord? This is not, what you see here is not dancing for the Lord. We are still under captivity under our enemies. And the, and, and the only way to know that is to be an Israelite. Okay? And we're telling you, when you look at all the captivities that was ready to fall, there was no rejoicing the mirth of the land is about done you're in a pandemic this is actually called the pandemic break the most high is showing the power of his hands you know of his hand through the spirit and these people are dancing and rejoicing like they're in the kingdom and this is the dangers of christianity the first thing they like to say is that they're covered by the blood of jesus they get see this is like going to play the, the lottery. And when you get the ticket, you're not sure if you won. But there's a chance that you may win. But you don't know. And this is what you see here in the Christian church. These people believe they've gotten a lottery ticket and they believe they have a ticket to the kingdom. Well, ultimately, if you're an Israelite, you will. But you got a lot of suffering to do, especially if you're not of the elect, there's hell to come upon you. 
you're not in the time of dancing and rejoicing and and uh and barking with all these demons you know we're not in the time of that so let's get uh let me get Matthew real quick uh Matthew 15 and 8 it says, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. None of them. Well, let me go. Let me jump here real quick. John 14 and 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, the Christians will say you're not under the law. Well, we are technically still under the law, but there's grace and mercy. We can't keep the, ho the whole law fully. And the law is not going to fully save you, but in a sense... If you uh, believe in the Heavenly Father, right, and His Son wholeheartedly, you won't take that RFID microchip. Why do I bring that up? Because you have people who claim they're following the law. But when that time comes, they're going to accept that RFID chip. Th this is what it is. So really, a, part, a portion of the law will save you because a part of the, the first commandment is to love the Lord with all your heart and all your might and all your strength. And if you accept the mark of the beast, if you accept uh, this man and his, his system and uh, to be implanted with that, that, that vera chip, then you haven't kept the first commandment. Okay? It's just that simple. Let's go to, uh, and they, these people claim they love the Lord, love the God, they love God, they love the Lord, and they don't have to follow. I've talked to a few Christians. They all say, we don't have to follow the law. I can get several scriptures that, that don't, you know, that comes against that. Yes, you do. you breaking the first commandment. If you're loving the Lord with all your heart and strength, why are you eating crabs and shrimp? Why are you committing adultery? Why are you eating swine? Why are you blonde in your hair? You would know that's a curse according to the Bible. If you love the Lord with all your heart, you're in the so-called church building with these tight, you know, wearing these jeans and all kind of different apparels. They don't read the Bible. In their, in their heart, their hearts, they believe, which is their spirit, they believe you can just come as you are, meaning you can do whatever the hell you want to do. And when we correct them on it and show them according to the Bible, First thing they say is the book is written by man. I know I just got into it with a Christian. Well, healthy conversation. And I say, well, the Bible doesn't say that. <laughs> they say, well, you know, a lot of the stuff is written by man. See, that's the excuse to continue in wickedness. But we're here to tell you things that get ready to happen. And I guarantee you, you won't be having no praise breaks in that day. You almost in that day. You're in the so-called pandemic and eventually a lockdown and all of the hell that may be coming behind this. Who knows? But we know we're close. This is Second Ezra's, um, uh, Second Ezra's, what, 16, and I'm going to go about 70. Um, it says, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection Upon those that fear the Lord, right? A lot of you people, when things happen, the first thing you, the first three words you say, is "Oh my God." That's the first thing you say, over and over. You can say you don't even believe in God, or you can say the Bible was written by man, the book written by man. I don't believe none of that stuff. See, when we was young in church, and I remember walking to church with uh, grown adults, they holding my hand crossing the street. And I had the Bible. Everybody accepted the Bible. Everybody was all about it. But now that we're bringing out the fact of what the Bible say. And that you cannot uh, commit adultery, murder, kill, eat poison foods. You know, now it's written by man. When we say Malachi 3 and 6, the Lord doesn't change. And you say the Lord change. When we say that. The Lord has a chosen people. And though all nations eventually will follow the Lord through his chosen, you have a problem with that. 
clearly we see there's a problem going on in this society today where everything is screwed up. If the people who so-called run this world today, as uh, the elder and brother Yashua Wamba say, the 1948ers, which is a good statement, if they, and, and I've talked to Apostle, you know, Apostle Ricard, we had that conversation. If these people ran this world and they were so righteous, why isn't everybody under them following the Holy Sabbath? Why aren't they teaching that in all the churches? Right? Why aren't they teaching them the Passover? Anyway, it says, uh, they shall be like madmen, sparing none but uh, still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. This is when you're going to get a big uh, militia, so to speak, world government, world police, foreigners coming in. It ain't going to be your regular police in your regular city neighborhoods. And they can use a situation like a pandemic to do it. That's what you people don't understand. They already uh, passing laws to cut off the electricity in your home and all utilities means water too. If you're in a house with somebody who had so-called this pandemic, this uh, this uh, disease. Anyway, then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in a fire. Okay, so. I don't really have much to say on this. I just wanted to bring this out. The fact that these people, Hosea 4 and 6, says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And they have rejected knowledge. That's why the Lord is going to reject them. The lack of knowledge, the beginning of the knowledge is this truth. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. You people, you don't have it. So you dance around in the church and you rejoice to what? Your captivity? Because you're not rejoicing to the kingdom of heaven. Where did the Lord say to do that? When the scripture says, praise ye the Lord, you're supposed to be thankful for knowing the truth. Nobody told you to huddle up in some building, wear anything you want to wear, eat anything you want to eat, blonde and dye your hair. Where's that in the scriptures? There's a certain way that we're supposed to conduct ourselves as, as children of the Most High. The Most High didn't tell you. The Most High made your hair the way it is. He didn't tell you to dump a bunch of dye in your head and bleach and blonde your hair. Okay. And these Jakes by the way. You can see that Jake got talent. Jake. <laughs> Jake playing the hell out of those instruments. But you're using that talent in wickedness. Right. You're not singing to the most high. You, you're, not, you're not singing to the heavenly father. Yahweh. You're not singing to the most high man. These, the, this is. In a wicked, a wicked occultic demonic practice you can see the demons in these people they don't know what to do with their self where is that in the scriptures we could show you the, the demonic activity in the scriptures we could show you uh, uh, with Yahweh went around and what you call Jesus and, and uh, touched people who had their demonic de demons and spirits on them this is what you guys have and this is why we call out to the Christians and say to be healed. Come away from that madness. Wake up out of those false Colossians 2 and 8. Uh, beware of, of false philosophies. I'm just paraphrasing that. Spoil you, spoil you through vain deceits after the traditions of men and not after Yahweh shot. They was doing that back in the uh, slavery, man. Go look at the old records. That praise breaking and stuff. That go back in slavery. That's the only time we because all we knew was how to pray, pray uh, praise the lord so even when we came over to slavery in our mindset this is what we were we didn't realize that the most high really put a, a heavy curse on us right we we understand but that's why we kept singing to the lord but i guarantee you we wasn't praise breaking on them slave ships but when you got comfortable and you got in your little place and they gave you a home and a social security card in a building to praise in, you feel relieved. That's where Jeremiah 8 and 11 says, they have healed the, the hurt of the daughter of my people people slightly, saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. There is no peace, man. We're not in a time of peace. 
That's why we call to the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and you others scattered around that may look like other nations, to call and to come out of those, those churches. They're demonic, and that's not what the Lord said to do. And you got to show us that in the scriptures. That's all I have on that, Shalom.